Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Mechanics C. Today we are going to talk about a question of rotation. So a ring of mass m, radius r, and a rotational inertia m r squared is initially sliding on a frictionless surface at a constant velocity v naught to the right, as shown. At time t equals to zero, it encounters a surface with coefficient of friction mu and begins sliding and rotating. After traveling a distance l, the ring begins rolling without sliding. Express all answers to the following in terms of m r v naught mu and the fundamental constants as appropriate. So you're probably familiar with situations like this, like when you're bowling in the beginning, the the ball is just sliding, and then it start to slide and rotate, and finally start to rotate without sliding. Part A, starting from Newton's second law, in either translational or rotational form, as appropriate, derive a differential equation that can be used to solve for the magnitude of the following as the ring is sliding and rotating. So first, the linear velocity v of the ring as a function of time. So they tell you starting from Newton's second law, and this is linear velocity, so you have to use translational form, which is net force equals to ma. What is the net force acting on the ring? So on the ring, you'll have normal force going up, gravity going down. Those forces cancel. Another force is the friction force. So friction force is net force, and friction force always reduce the speed. Because you have initial speed, so friction force is going to reduce that. That's why friction force produces negative acceleration in this case. So friction force is mu times n, and n is just mg. That equals negative ma, so you have a equals negative mu g. You have to write differential equation. That means you have to write it in terms of derivatives. a is dv over dt, that equals to negative mu g. Part 2. You do the same thing for angular velocity omega of the ring as a function of time. Very similar, instead of force equals to ma, you have net torque equals to i alpha. What is the force that's producing torque? It is the friction. So for torque equals f times r, that equals i, which is mr squared times alpha. Now r and r cancel, we also know friction equals mu mg, substitute in, cancel out m, cancel 1r, so alpha equals mu g over r, Again, write in differential equation form, d omega over dt should be equal to mu g over r. And that's the answer for number two. Part b, you'll have to derive an expression for the magnitude of the falling as the ring is sliding and rotating. So we know the derivative for v. How do we find v? There are a couple ways. You can do the uh, integral to find v. But in this case, since acceleration is constant, we already know the equations for constant acceleration, v is just equals to v naught plus at. We know a is negative mu g substitute in v equals v naught minus mu g t. Part, next part, how do we find angular velocity omega of the ring as a function of time? It's similar since alpha is constant, so we know omega equals omega naught plus alpha t. We know omega naught equals to zero because it wasn't rotating in the beginning, so this cancels out. Omega is just alpha t, and alpha equals mu g over r, so omega equals mu g over r times t. Next part, you have to derive an expression for the time it takes the ring to travel distance l. So what happens at distance l? At distance l, the ring is rotating with no sliding. That means v equals r omega. We know what v is. We know what omega is from part um, part b. So substitute in v equals v naught minus mu g t, and omega equals r times mu g. Uh, omega is mu g over r times t, and you have to times r. This r and r cancelled. You add mu g t on both sides, then you solve for t. t equals v naught divided by 2 mu g. 
Part D derive an expression for the magnitude and velocity of the ring immediately after its traveled distance L. We know how long it has taken. We know also know um velocity equals V naught minus mu G T. We know this expression, you simply substitute the time into this expression. Mu G and mu G cancels, so it's V naught minus V naught over two. V equals V naught over two. So that is the velocity. As you can see, velocity has decreased from V naught to V naught over two because friction reduced velocity. Last part, derive an expression for distance L. For this distance L, we know a lot of things already. We know initial velocity, we know final velocity, we know acceleration is negative mu g. So you can use timeless equation for sure. You can also use d equals vit plus 1 half at squared because you know a and you know t. I'm going to use another equation, which is, to me, it's the easiest equation, and a lot of people forgot to use it. That's the distance equals the average speed times time. I can find average speed because I know initial is v naught, final is v naught over 2. So the average speed is just initial plus final divided by 2. I also know the time. So this is 1 plus 1 half, that's 3 over 2. Divided by 2, that's 3 over 4. Times 1 half, that's 3 eighths. Then here is v naught times v naught is v naught squared divided by mu g. So L is just 3 v naught squared divided by a mu g. That's it. I hope it helps, and thanks for watching. See you next time.